and no solos and welcome back to another video and today we'll be taking a look at Mercadian Mask and yeah this is like a kind of a good set and I actually kind of like to for what it did but some of the cards we're going to be explaining are not the cards I like I mean most of them are kind of broken uh, but some of them were kind of unique and kind of you know cool I guess but we're going to just be talking about the most powerful cards of course you know we're not talking about fun in this list so we'll just be talking about the 10 most uh, powerful cards in Mercadian Mask. Oh yes, and there was some pretty powerful ones. And well, let's just move on here before we get a head start. And we're going to be starting with a cycle of cards where <laughs> it's basically free. And at number 10, the first one, is Unmask. And don't mind the mana cost because you'll probably want to read the first line of text. Uh, you may exile a black card from your hand rather than pay this mana cost, okay? And then target player reveals his or her hand, you choose an online card from it, that player discards a card. Oh yes. So yeah, this is good in many ways. Uh, a lot of decks like this because sometimes they're mana-less. So we see this being played in a mana -less dredge in Vintage, uh, where uh, basically dredge does not use any mana of any sorts and pays everything for free. And can get st and they they don't really play anything on their first turn. Uh, what they do is if they're on the draw, you just put the dredge card in the graveyard and boom, you got a bunch of just dredge triggers and stuff. But you can play some free spells like this card, uh, like Unmask. And this is powerful for many reasons. Uh, this does give an edge for manaless dredge, so that way they can pick away uh, pesky uh, graveyard uh, hate. And yeah, it's just a really powerful card. Um, and this saw play in Manalus Dredge, and still sees play today. And that that deck is just a disgrace because you you don't pay mana for what? This is what the game's all about. Just breaking the fundamental rules of not paying mana is just disgusting. And making cards that you don't have to pay mana for is disgusting. And we'll talk about <laughs> the cards up here that you don't have to pay mana and just give you so much benefit. It's it's absolutely insane. Uh, and we'll be moving on, because number 9 is the next, uh, basically, free spell. Uh, is, uh, it's a kind of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of an iffy one I wanted to put on number 9, but at number 9 we have Misdirection, oh yes. I think some people recognize this as being kind of a bad card, but I'll, I'll put it on number 9 just because of what it could possibly do and what it can do. Uh, because it is a free spell, after all. Uh, you may exile a blue card rather than pay this mana cost. I'm not going to read the mana cost because there's no point. Change the target of target spell with a single target. Now, you might be thinking, uh, it's kind of bad because you got to wait for it targeted. But it, for being free, it's actually really damn good. Uh, this could be used in sideboards against taking turn decks in modern. Because they'll probably want to target themselves when they take an extra turn, duh. But you can use this as your advantage in control decks to make yourself take the extra turn instead. And that can really set the extra turn uh, spell guy back. And yeah, uh, basically it's, it's used in sideboard against uh, taking turns. Uh, but it can also be seen in some decks that don't need mana, like a mana list dredge. But I don't know if they would probably run this card. They, they pretty much run any card that doesn't take any mana though. So I wouldn't be too surprised. But yeah... I uh, just wanted to cover that on the list, put it on number 9. Kind of a, a short story of why Misdirection was good. Um, but on game nights, they said, yeah, this card isn't really that good. And they're kind of right. Uh, deflecting Swat, I think, is a little bit better. But yeah, let's move on to number 8. And number 8, uh, you know, people are going to kind of also point this one out as not being good and why it's a number 8. But it's uh, Dust Bowl. Uh, yeah, so Dust Bowl, number 8. Uh, and this was actually a real event in, uh, in the olden days of the United States. And there was just basically a big dust storm that uh, blew all the crops away. I think it was in like uh, California in the Route 60s. I can't really explain the whole history of that, but that happened. A big dust storm, or whatever you call it, a dust bowl, you would say. Uh, but yeah, this is just a simple land for add one colorless to your mana pool, but that's not all it does. You can pay three and tap it to sacrifice a land and destroy a target non-basic land. Now I might be thinking that's you could just use strip mine or wasteland, uh, but this can be good in every way because this is actually uh, a utility-based land, and this would uh, sometimes see play in legacy decks because sometimes you need the extra utility to take out some lands. And this would also be good in the mirror match because you could take care of some pesky stuff like uh, um, Dark Depths. 
I think it's indestructible though. I don't know if you could destroy it. I'm pretty sure you can destroy Dark Depths and you could destroy Guy's Cradle. And you can keep doing that because they might run multiples of it. And there you go. There's an answer to it. And you don't have to sack the land in response. You can sacrifice another land if you really want to. Or itself. It doesn't say another land. Which is stupid. But yeah, if I was living here, bro, oh my gosh. I gotta do some renovating. I gotta close up those windows. I gotta call some, like, some maid service over here to dust up all the all the stuff off, you know, if I was living here. I probably wouldn't be living there, though, because I don't live in no dust bowl. I'm just saying. But yeah, and uh, let's move on to number seven. And we're going to talk about why um, functionality works better than, uh, you know, tournament play. Like, the actual effect is better than the actual play it has. So, and number seven will show a good example of that. Um, so this is Black Market. Uh, it's three black black for an enchantment for whenever a creature dies, put a charge counter on a black market. And what does that do? At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, add black to your mana pool for each charge counter on black market. And that's without paying anything. So yeah, this is just basically played in commander decks, like in aristocrats decks or in any sack decks. And this card is just a value engine because you just get mana for free. Basically, the, the the decks they run will just get mana for free because they're free sack outlets and you get mana on top of it. Uh, but I put this on number seven, not just because of it, it doesn't see play anywhere else other than Commander, I believe. But I just put it for the effect because I think that effect is kind of kind of busted and getting like just free mana. It's been free mana about this list the whole entire time sometimes and destroying mana, but mostly about free. Um, and yeah, it's just... Kind of a powerful card, and I think it deserves number seven on this list, honestly. But I make some bad trade deals, boy. Look at that. Look at that trade deal. You know, you get some mana for free. Hey, that's not a bad trade deal, but the cost for it, ooh, it's kind of. You see, kind of the kind of the flavor here, right? He has those skulls. You know, you know how did how did he get those? Oh yeah, by killing some stuff. And here's your reward, mana. Uh, but those just look like a bunch of rocks. You're giving him pebbles or something. <laughs> I don't even know, man. I don't even know what's going on in this picture, but I know that's the lore is what's being told here. But yeah, anyways, that is <laughs> that is the uh, Black Market. Let's move on to number six, which is kind of kind of goes into Black Market, but not really. It's six uh, bribery. And yes, I love this card. I, I play it in some of my commander decks, and it's just funny to see their faces be like, oh, oh, I know what he's going to get. Oh, I know what a combo he's going to do it with. Oh, because I just exposed your deck, basically. Uh, and it's even better, because it's a three blue blue sorcery for search target opponent's library for a creature card, and put that card into play under your control. Then that player shuffles his or her library. Yeah, so if you have a Vorinclex, I'm going to take it from you. You shouldn't be playing that card, boy. Um, but yeah, this just sees play in Commander, and it actually did see play in some other decks too, like, uh, actually I think saw play in Standard, and it was a sideboard card, uh, because people were running, um, Pergrim Drake, um, that untaps all your lands, or that Drake that steals stuff, a lot of Drakes basically, but that Drake that steals stuff, so what you could basically do is do bribery for that Drake, and you could say, oh, I'm gonna take that instead, and you get the benefit of the doubt of it. It's pretty good. A pretty good trade-off. But it was just played in bribery decks. This could just be an unworthy go on crack. Because you could steal their best creature. And it's basically theirs. Um, and I think that's what it was used in the standard of the time. But it's also just a really good commander card. I don't I don't know why people aren't playing this more. It's a really good card. And yes, let's move on to the last card that's all about effect. And it's number five. It is Stone Rain. More like stone meteors, goddamn. Uh, so it's two red sorcery for destroy target land. That's it. Why is this on number five? Well, I'll tell you why this is not on number five. Because it actually inspired a deck uh, called Ponza. And it still sees play in modern today. And what Ponza is all about is getting advantage of your rural base midrange while destroying lands. And it's kind of an interesting deck in itself because you could destroy those lands. And there's even cards that get a benefit off of this, like the Cascade uh, card. Um, like there's some Cascade cards in the deck. There's some ways of getting it back. 
it, it's obviously it's honestly disgusting and obviously disgusting um and they just basically try to destroy lands and tempo themselves and mid-range you out with basically value creatures and it still sees play today but it doesn't use stone rain i think it uses rubble readings or whatever or it, it uses pillage never mind pillage yeah that card can destroy an artifact and a land and it's the same cost so yeah uh, but Stone Rain did expire uh, a deck to be uh, dominant, and that was Ponza. And Ponza still sees play in modern to this day. <laughs> and destroying lands in general is just really, really like degenerate and stupid, and shouldn't have not been in the game. Because come on, you can't mess with my mana. But eventually it was going to be printed. So I mean, you got to destroy some lands like Guy's Cradle and some stuff. And if there's no way to do it, then you kind of need an answer. And here you go, there's one of your answers. There's probably many answers, though, but this is one of them. And yeah, that's basically it for that one, because number four is not going to be basically it. He's going to keep coming back. I'm making some terrible jokes and terrible one-liners. But yeah, it is number four, Squee Goblin to Bob. And you probably already know what this guy does. Uh, it's a two red goblin legend, but it's actually just a legendary goblin. Uh, it's kind of oracle weird. I, got, I went with the old art because I wanted to show you guys the old art. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if Squee Goblin Mob is in your graveyard, you may return Squee to your hand. So yeah. Basically, this card equivalents to you just have it in your hand, and if you discard it, you return it back to your hand. Alright, what's the big deal? It's a 1-1 one, one for 3. That's terrible. But people didn't actually play the card. And I mean that literally. They didn't play the card, actually. They kept it in their hand. Of course they would keep it in their hand. It didn't say it, it had to be it not be in your hand, no. So what people would do is basically combine Squee Goblin to Bob, and this was in the olden days, with Mastercore. And Mastercore used to be the best creature in the game uh, for the standard of its time. And it was a really good creature because it regenerates itself. It can deal one damage to target creature. Some people thought, uh, okay, it, it has a really bad downside, so I can't play it. Well, with Squee Nob Goblin to Bob, you can negate that downside because it will come back to your hand every upkeep. And you could stack the triggers so that way you could just discard the Squee first and then have its effect. Uh, and Massacre was the best creature in the game at that time. And with its downside, barely anyone played it because it was just a bad downside. But with Goblin to Bob, it completed the deck. And Massacre decks saw play because of Goblin to Bob. <laughs> This one creature that didn't even get played in the battlefield. Sometimes it might, if you're in emergency situations, you know. Magic getting knocked out by a uh, squee, you know, a 1-1. One, one. Oh my gosh, that would be the most embarrassing thing ever. But yeah, uh, that's all play. But it didn't stop there. After Massacre basically rotated on squee, got a reprint. This saw play in decks called Solitary Confinement Combo Decks. And basically what this meant is you basically locked your opponent out of the game. And the, re the way you did this is basically you would discard Squee every upkeep to Solitary Confinement. Sure, you had to skip your discard, uh, your not your discard phase, your draw phase. Um, but that wasn't a big downside because the main way this deck won was just to lock out the opponent. And basically make sure the opponent can't really do anything to you. Because he can't be the target of spells or abilities, and you can prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to you. Um, and kind of the problem with this deck was is you can just remove solitary confinement. Uh, but they had a lot of uh, other ways of like protecting it, or they had other ways of getting around it. And if you didn't have removal for solitary confinement, you basically lost the game because they would just basically you'd basically draw out your library and you would lose. Um, and yeah, that's kind of degenerate for the time being. Um, and it saw modest play in solitary confinement decks, and it was just, it was just stupid because you could just set up your board state to an automatic lockout, which was kind of dumb at at the time. And I'm surprised I didn't even see a ban. Um, but yeah, it was just kind of stupid, kind of a, a niche deck. But eventually, everyone caught on and went on with the went on, went on with their lives. Um, but we're gonna move on to number three and. You'll probably... Okay, I'm going to stop making his jokes. All right. With number three, we're going to go serious mode on this because this is a seriously busted card. It's Food Chain. I think everyone knows what Food Chain is. Um, 
maybe not everyone, but still. It's two green for an enchantment for you can remove a creature from the game and add X to your mana pool. Any color where X is the remove creatures can be mana cost plus one. What? This mana may be spent only play creature spells. Keep that in mind. Um, so yeah, basically food chain only saw play in uh, commander. That's it. That's all it's all playing. But not just any commander, competitive commander. And food chain decks were so good because you could just replay some commanders with it. Oh, I wonder what commanders you could play with it. Almost any. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous how many food chain combos there are. But basically, food chain was just a combo enabler for a lot of decks. And food chain was just really degenerate in some ways that it was just top tier in CEDH. Um, because this combo was just everywhere. And also, you know, Flash Hulk. But this was up there too. And I really don't want to get more into this. But yeah, Food Chain is just one of those cards that just... You, you see it and it, it can only be played in one deck, honestly. Because no one would want to remove their creature from the game and add that much color. Like... If you want to ramp, sure, but that's not even worth it because you're removing one for one. It's like, damn, that's like hideous. But if you combine it with your commander, there you go. Because you could just put it in the command zone every time and boom, 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 you keep getting it back. It's ridiculous. So yeah, that's why Food Chain was broken and that's why we're going to move on because I don't like this card. I hate talking about this card, so I'm just going to move on to number two. Which is kind of a cool card, but kind of not. Sometimes, and I don't know why people think, oh, this shouldn't be number two. I, I think people are going to say this shouldn't be number two, but uh, hear me out. All right, it's Rashid Rashidian Port. So it's add one color to your mana pool. Okay, what's the big deal about that? And you can tap it for one and tap target land. Okay, why is that powerful? That's not powerful. Oh, but what's more powerful than destroying a land? Because they could just honestly get it back with Crucible of Worlds. Or they can have life from the loan. What's more powerful than that? Well, goddamn tapping it down like a gravity nuke. Um, and actually, yes, this saw play in um, some decks in block. And it was played against the Civi decks to not get them out of control. So what this would do is tap down their lands. And this actually had to be banned in block because it was way too good. Um, because it always interrupted the player's plan. So what you could do is wait for their upkeep and tap... Uh, use this ability to tap their land in response. Of course, they'll float the man up, but it will disappear after they switch phases. Um, so yeah, this card was just really this card was just really good, and I actually like this card. Um, it's probably one of my favorite lands of all time because of just the flavor and stuff. But yeah, it's just a really solid card, and I love it. And uh, you know, I kind of like the flavor of it too. It's kind of like a, a like a port. You gotta wait. You know, for <laughs> I think the tapping's supposed to be you gotta get like like a cost or something. I don't know, but it just ha I think there's like some hidden flavor in it, and I love it. Um, and some people don't, and that's why I put it on number two because some people don't. They don't like their lands being tapped down and losing all their mana. You could tap down those guys' cradles though. You could tap down those like annoying like Caracas, Caracas. You know, it's just great. It's just great. I like it. But anyways, yeah, you just got a solid land with solid upside. It's just great. And yeah, let's move on uh, to this degenerate card, which I also don't want to talk about what we got to. And number one, and the cycle continues, but I think this is just abomination of a card and should have never been printed. It's really a disgrace to the game. It's Gush. And I don't even play this in my Niv deck. I actually wanted to not put this in my nib and I didn't I didn't put it in my nib deck. I kept it in a binder. I just I thought it was just way too broken. And yeah, gush. Don't even read the mana cost. You don't need to. It's because it's an instant for you may return two islands you control to their owner's hand rather than pay this cost. Hmm why is that so good you might ask? Well, obviously <laughs> you don't have to pay the mana cost, but honestly that's not a big downside because you can draw two cards for free. At instant speed! Holy crap, if this is draw one, this would still be powerful. Like, this is just really, really broken. And at instant speed too, like, you could always have mana up for it. 
You don't even need to have mana up for it. You just have to have those lands. And it didn't say you may return two islands. It says any islands. Let's say basic. Also it doesn't say it also doesn't say untapped or tapped islands. It just says two islands. They could be tapped. You could pay like a cost for it. Nope. 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 They didn't they didn't they didn't account for that, did they? Nope, they did not. Um so this card, <laughs> funny enough, sees play. Um, and it actually got banned in Popper because it was just way too good. And I don't know, even know why it's a common rarity, but it is. It was reprinted as that before. What a freaking disgrace. And this was played alongside um, Foil. And what you could do with this combo, this little nifty combo, is you could basically uh, have Gush. And if someone's trying to play a spell, you can say, oh, Gush in response. I returned my island. Okay, now I cast Foil for free because now I can discard the two islands, or I could discard another card in the island. You know, you get the drift. And you basically had a counterspell draw two. And that was just some really, really degenerate crap. And they actually had to ban Gush because that was just too powerful. It just made the game feel like a lockout. Because they would all you would never know if they had the Gush and the foil combo. You would never know because you didn't they didn't have to pay the mana cost. And this created some lockout states and some degenerate, like, types of ways of thinking about the game. And they just banned Gush outright. It was just way too good for its own. Right. And this actually still sees play today in Vintage Storm decks. Because this is definitely a free spell. And the downside is you, you only have to return islands. <laughs> Mind you, they're not untapped. You, you could just cast them. And this can go to your Storm Cow. And yeah, just... Just degeneracy in a, in a nutshell. And that was basically it from Arcadian Mask. It just kind of a broken set. I did not like the free cash crap. I think that crap should go forever. And it just didn't, it wasn't fun to print this crap. I think the only card that just was a disgrace was Gush. Um, Food Chain, uh, you can argue that was also a bad one. But Gush really takes the fucking cake uh, for just being degenerate all around. Just Draw two for free, nah, nah. That's like Gitaxian probe levels of broken. Okay, let's not go there. But anyways, that's gonna do it for the list. And um, yeah, the next one will be kind of a kind of a also an interesting one. I'd like to talk about that one. Um, and I have a lot more lists for you guys, and it, it it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. The next the next one will be fun. You guys will like it. Maybe. Number one won't, will be kind of a eh, but we'll see what you guys think. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you have a wonderful day or night. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye and peace.